Hello darlings, I am Cassandra George Sturgis. Welcome to my channel, Authentic Beauty Handmade Dolls and Crafts. In this video, I am so excited. I am going to show you how to attach the arms to your sock doll, Josephine. And here is Josephine, and you see I have made her um, a, a bra and a pair of panties, which I also have a tutorial coming up later. And um, I attached her arms, and these little bands here, these are the little things that you can buy them from the beauty supply stores. And oh, let me see if I have a little patch here. Oh, I do, I do, I do. I'm oh, gonna keep her in focus. And so that's what this is right here. And even the thing on her her necklace here, it's just a little black band. And um, you get a pack of these. I think these are like maybe a dollar or two. And these were at the beauty supply also. But in the in, a, in the next couple of videos. I'm going to show you how to make a panty. So I just want to say that because I don't know if I'm going to remember to do it later. So um, also in this video, I am going to show you how to make this sock doll anatomically correct. And for those of you who um, are not comfortable, you know, please, I'm going to put a warning. Just shut it down. Shut it down. Thank you for watching. Um, this has been a very difficult video for me because to a certain degree you want to fit in and so do you want to fit in or do you want to belong and I feel like fitting in is trying to be somewhere that you are trying to please people who don't necessarily like you for who you are and belonging is when you vibe with your tribe and so in this video I was going to make my doll completely like this anyway but I was going to not um, show this for my YouTube subscribers like or for people who are not subscribers because some people watching who aren't subscribed I don't want to offend anybody but I don't want to be fake and I don't want to you know sell you a, something that is really not me and, and I really hope that you guys stay around but I mean I mean, I'm nervous because I'm expecting to see people like unsubscribe. Like, I can't believe. Oh, let me shut her eyes. Sorry, Josephine. I can't believe she actually made the whole. But I think it's beautiful. I, um, I'm not being offensive. I'm not trying to, um, you know, make anyone uncomfortable. I just want to make the most beautiful doll that I can. And to honor Josephine, like I said before, Josephine married this super handsome guy. And she told me recently, and guys, the whole story is going to come after her tutorial is complete. But, you know, he had three kids by three different women outside of her marriage. This is not a woman that I can just, you know, half make. This woman has a story. So she's going to have like a really cute um, sweater dress and some knee-high boots that I'm working on. So right now, um, and, you know, here, as you can see, I have, let me um Look, sit back a little bit maybe her little panties oh what you know, as you know she is fully articulate because of the rubber I mean rubber I'm sorry because of the wire armature but this is her little bra and panty set and um oh let me get her back posed and I'm going to show you how to weave her hair that video is coming up as well and her hair is weaved in and this is like a two-hour weave job I'm sorry I thought the video was showing it it's a two-hour weave job and you can put her hair in various hairstyles for me when I make my dolls I cannot stand let me just get her back in focus there's no point in her being here out of focus honey uh, when I make my dolls I try to make sure that I can change their hair around in various hairstyles I don't want them to be stuck in one hairstyle and you know just I don't know just for fun so without further ado I am going to like I said I'm going to show you how to make to I'm sorry how to attach the arms to your sock doll Josephine and after that tutorial I will put up a warning for those of you who are the serious doll makers and I am going to show you how to make her anatomically correct I am not trying to offend anyone and but I really want to I'm gonna you know this 
I want to be true to myself and to the people who vibe with me. Thank you so much for watching. The first thing you want to do is use some fiber fill to stuff the doll's hand and arm. Now what I like to do is take the fiber fill and um, roll it, or how do I want to say this, but kind of like twirl it around the fiber fill like a Q-tip and stick it in the thumb. If you don't, and then when you stick the cotton in the thumb that's rolled on top of the doll, you want to gently hold that cotton right in place for the thumb. Otherwise, the thumb would not remain in, pl in place. Another thing you can do is use a pipe cleaner to stick inside of the thumb. And so once you have the hand gently filled with fiber fill, because you don't want the hand too fat, you're going to go ahead and shape the floor wire to fit the palm of the hand. Now, like I said in the previous video, typically this is a part of the armature that I have for the entire doll, but I did not make the armature long enough for Josephine, so I'm making the arms separately. This floral wire is very flexible, very pliable, it's very easy to bend, so make sure you twist it. In the future, we're going to make a doll with 16 gauge wire and this is the wire that I prefer to make my dolls with. It's very firm. You can pose your dolls. It's very bendable, but it has a lot of um, has a lot of grip. <laughs> it's a very um, strong wire. But this is really fun for this project because, like I said before, the sock is so soft and so delicate that I think this wire is perfect to use for this project. The floral wire. As you see in the video here, I am twirling the doll around the fiber fill and I am sticking it inside of the thumb. And when I stick it inside of the thumb, yes, it's really nice. So um, you have to hold it in place a little bit until it, but it will remain. But you just want to make sure that it's there. And then once you get the fiber fill in and you have filled out the thumb, then you want to put the wire in and then continue to gently stuff the arm because you don't want it to look like a big fat sausage. I mean, like it's, like I said, this sock is really soft and it's easy to um, overstuff and make it look out of shape. So just be very gentle. This video has been sped up at least four or five times. So it looks like I'm just being like, you know, like I eat, like I'm just being really rough with the doll. <laughs> but that's not true. So just be careful as you stuff the doll's arms. Now after you've stuffed the first doll's arm, you want to use it as a gauge to, um, as to how much fiber fill you want to put into the next arm. So I found that when I'm making dolls, the first one is always easy. The first leg, the first eye, everything. The first one is easy because you're going to try to duplicate it on the second one. So don't stress out on the first one, stress out on the second one. But you're constantly looking at the first one to determine how big or small or what color or what size the next part of the body needs to be based on you know, the matching body part. As you can see in the video, I'm using my needle to move the fiber field more into the thumb. Because like I said before, the th I don't know, like little small spots like that. You want to use your needle to pull the fiber field and just stuff it in that spot. But when you twirl it around the doll and if you hold it and then remove it, that's going to be pretty secure, but you still may need to push it in there a little bit more later. I am rolling down the top portion of the wire inside of the doll's arm and I'm doing this just to make sure that it doesn't stick through the fabric because it would rip it and also I think it gives it a, a rounded look. Once you finish stuffing the doll's arm, you want to go ahead and ladder stitch it in place. 
you know just measure where you think the doll's arms should be um, just look at your own body as a gauge and you know and again I'm always saying please do not worry about being perfect or so what if one arm is a little bit farther <laughs> down than the other I mean I just feel like those are little issues that can stop you from it stops the artistic flow so when you're you know just get it do the best you can what I do is like I said the first one you don't have to worry about because you know the it's the it's your guide and then the second one you just use it as a guide but even with doing that sometimes things are just not proportioned to me but I have learned to just let things go when you think about the fashion dolls the ball jointed dolls the Barbie dolls the American Girl dolls those dolls are created from a mode and put into a machine and they are made perfect every single time and I think that if you think about life the things that are the most soulful the most rich the most nourishing are things that are unpredictable things that are not always the same things that are messy things that are imperfect you know like human beings so I just feel that as human beings we're always looking for perfection like people you know I, I hate I don't have anything against anybody who have any type of cosmetic surgery I'm not saying I wouldn't do it I mean I have it and it doesn't really necessarily appeal to me but I'm just saying that we're looking for perfection and we're only going to be on this planet for a brief moment in time and to me I feel like you know like when I look back I just I don't I don't know I don't know if what my corpse look like is the most important part I don't I'm I don't know so I'm just saying that I just feel like we're always we're focusing on making something perfect but perfection is not where real life and real meaning and things that really feed us live another thing that really I don't know if this is another thing but that bothers me about making the sock doll is that the maybe it's just the type of fabric that this particular sock is made out of but it likes to collect lint so it, it, it looks very knotty and so I've been trying to like use my little um, you know tape and what are those little sticky things you use to get lint off your clothes and I said geez but by, by the time I make her boots and her dress you know she's gonna look a hot mess and I'm so I'm trying to be very gentle and maybe I shouldn't make her on this towel because you know towel has lint and it um, is affecting the fabric but anyway so when you're making your doll just be very gentle with the way you handle her You know, it's kind of funny, but in case anybody is wondering, like, what made you decide to make a sock doll anatomically correct? Are you crazy? <laughs> you know, actually, the whole thing came to me in a dream. Like, I, um, the way I normally make those intimate parts of my doll's body, I have never made them like that before. So what I am doing in this video is something that I've actually not done before. I woke up and it was about four o'clock in the morning a few days ago and the idea was there and I have learned that when an idea comes to you you have to capture it and so no it, I actually have never done this before and um, I don't know I saw it it came to me in my dreams so no I'm not crazy or anything like that but it's definitely a technique that I plan to use in the future we have now successfully attach the arms to Josephine our sock doll and so for those of you who are not interested in making your doll anatomically correct please um, exit the video now thank you so much for watching and now we're going to move ahead you're going to need a jelly roll pen to draw circles on the on the doll's chest and what I'm doing in the video is taking a needle to move the fiber fill to the very tip. And what you're going to do is once you finish drawing the circle, you are going to take your needle again to make sure that the fiber fill is at the tip. 
and then you're going to do a running stitch around the circle and pull it extremely tight making sure that you have a portion um, a small enough portion to create the doll's upper body portion if that makes sense so uh, you can see in the video here so the running stitch is basically where you just go in and out with the needle and then I use the, the um, tip of the needle to make sure that enough fiber fill is there be very careful because you can easily make it too big or too small um, I've done done it before but again I'm not a real stickler but just really just let it flow when I say let it flow I mean don't get really nervous and anal like oh what if one is a little bit I mean if you look at your own body you're probably gonna see a lot of things that are not are not asymmetrical so just you know just go with the flow now once you complete the running stitch you're gonna pull it extremely tight and then you're going to take the needle across the the area that you've pulled up so I would do that at least three or four times in different directions around the, the circle that you've pulled tightly. You want to go ahead and again use the other um, body body part as a guide for the other for the other side. And uh, again, you see I used the running stitch. I pulled it really really tight and then I took my needle across in various areas to secure the fiber fill in place now after I finish doing this I'm going to use some gesso to paint around it to create a more realistic look now I don't know if you guys noticed but I'm really avoiding certain words because you know I don't want I don't want to get banned <laughs> and I don't but um yeah, so I'm, you, as you can see the video and you can see what's going on. So now I am drawing a circle again and I, I'm going to do it to both sides so they can be uh, similar in appearance. And then I am going to put some gesso on it and I'm going to let it dry for maybe, I think I'll let it dry for about an hour. Yeah, I graded some papers and by the time I finished it, it had completely dried. And then I use some paint. I used three different paints because the the brown was too light. And then I think I used like this really pretty black goldish color. I think that's what it was. You know, I can't remember the order now. But anyway, it took three tries for me to, to make it complement her skin color. But just have fun with it. I am now using a 3D paint to create the Montgomery glands and these are glands that actually provide oil um, to moisturize that area and it makes it easier for babies when they're breastfeeding. So it, it's, I don't know if I can, if, it, if the camera is ever able to show you how nice it looks but it is really really beautiful. Um, I used to teach human sexuality. I taught it for 15 years and I just stopped teaching it just recently. It's just mainly because, I don't know, I just got a little bit bored with it. But, um, yeah, I really, and, and I think that's another reason why I am really, it's just normal to me to, dis, you know, to create and discuss the, every part of the human body. And as a matter of fact, in my classroom, we made um, the, the female and the male reproductive system as a class project because I wanted people to really understand how the body works. And um, yeah, and it was really fun. I mean, you would see them all over class, all over the building. Sometimes people would have fun with them, but there was like, people said it was like Sesame Street, Sesame Street meets human sexuality. So it was never anything vulgar. 
Um, so basically now what I'm going to do is go ahead and sculpt her lady garden. And um, I went in through the back, like right at the very top of her, um, the back of her. As I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to make a loop to create the, the opening area. And then I'm going to come back in. You see, I'm pulling, using my needle to pu put the stuffing in the area to give it a little bit, you know, to make it look a little more realistic. And then I'm going to go around it and s sculpt that little stuffing area. Now, I could have made the the area where I'm sewing, I should have used a smaller needle. You see how big those holes are? I really didn't want to tear the doll. I was like, oh my goodness, I should have had a skinny needle. So I didn't need that much. But um, you do want to just go ahead and make it to, to define the area to make it look a little bit more realistic. So now that the gesso has dried, I am applying the first coat of paint. And um, as you can see, I don't like this brown, it's too light. So the, it was called dark brown actually, but um, Josephine is like a, a cocoa, I don't know what kind, what color brown you would call that. I don't, like an espresso brown, but you know. But basically this is supposed to be dark brown, but I thought it was too light but again it's a doll I mean I could have let it go but then I decided no gotta put another color on top of this now this is the blackish gold this the black gold type color that I was referring to earlier um, I really like this color I think it's pretty I used it for the base of her pupil but I think I decided mm, I, I don't know I wanted to I think I ended up using just the basic black I usually make this portion of the doll in a different um, way. I usually find like a, some type of leather and I do like a really nice blanket stitch around it and I like to make it that area a little puffy and I typically get use hot glue to create the you know the nipple <laughs> and um, I would paint it and then I would glue it on. And before that, I used pom-poms. And pom-poms, I don't know, at the time I thought it was cute. But now I thought, no, the hot glue little dots look a lot more realistic. But I even like this method. But to do this method, you definitely need a, a stretchy fabric. So if you have a fabric that doesn't stretch, you're not going to be able to do this. But I really like it. I, th I thought they turned out really nice. I hope you can see the Montgomery glands. You know, it's just that little, little detail that I always like. And um, there you have it. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and prepare the hair. And this hair is a little bit more coarse than usual. Um, it's actually the hair that I use for Jungle Beauty Goddess the me. Her hair is like in a mohawk. And I like it because I don't know if you can see how tightly coiled it is. So what you're going to do is just get a pair of scissors and you're going to just cut it really, I don't not too fine, but you know what I mean, like fine enough, like as long as the hairs would be. And I'm using my fabric fuse because it dries 100% clear. And then I'm going to go ahead and place the hair on top of the fabric fuse and it dries to a really nice finish. So now I'm going to find um, a pink, dark red type color. I think it's like a magenta pink or color. It's really pretty. And I just placed a little bit right there in the opening to make it look more realistic. And I always like a pop of color because I think it just brings things to life.
so this completes the tutorial on how to attach the arm and other things to um, Josephine. Let me know in the comment box below if you thought this was a pretty cool tutorial. I know there is a doll inside of you who is dying to come to life, but only you can breathe life into her. Thank you so much for watching.